Another banger. Saturday, ludicrous. Ah. That's one of those ones right there as well, man. Yes, sir. Sticky, iggy, iggy, iggy. Yes, sir. Uh, Shouts out to Ludacris, man. He um he always showed love to organize and always came over to get a song. And Reek had that beat going. And um, he told Reek about the idea he had was Saturday. He was like, man, I just want to sleep, come in and go, <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> I like, cool. <laughs> So, what in the, one of my favorite Ludacris songs that I did with him was Blueberry Yum Yum. Okay. That one right now. Yeah, yeah. I like, to, I like to play that when I got me that. You know what I'm saying? A little something about to burn up. <laughs> what about that popping Jags with Jay Z, though? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that's me on that record. That's funny. Yep, popping Jags, man. That was something that uh, he had reached out to Big. Kanye did the beat. He reached out to Big and told Big he kind of wanted that outcast feel on it. So that meant he wanted me to sing the hook. Yeah. Instead of saying, yeah, can you get sleep to sing it? I need that outcast feel. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, that's how Papa Taz came to be. I just really sung with uh, Kanye had already wrote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When it came to working outside of the dungeon with different artists, what were those experiences like when you would get a Jay-Z or you would get a Ludacris and stuff like that or TLC for that fact, you know, just working with outside folks? I mean, it, you know, it, it was pretty cool because we always gave them, gave them our formula. We didn't, you know, that was the thing about it. They wanted us to do what we were already doing. They didn't say, you know, well, we need some kind of like this or that. They would just follow Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we would work with somebody, they would be open and, and you know, to work with whatever we did. So that was just kind of cool. It, it never was really a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. At all. Like, especially, like, you know, my, my boy Marquez, that's a part of uh, Dungeon Family, one of the originals, uh, singer, yes, sir. songwriter. He wrote Waterfalls. And, you know, like, sh when we time we heard it, we knew it was like something special. We called T Boss. We all friends. We're like, can you come up and sing this right quick? And she came right up and sung it. That's how the record made the album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, it's it, it's. I'm not gonna say it's always easy to work with somebody. You know, um, outside of the crew, but we always make it work. Talk to me about just that Atlanta and those three degrees of separation from every damn body growing up together and then everybody experiencing massive success. What was that like going into the music industry and seeing folks that you went to high school with kin to just as successful as yourself? Uh, it was really great, but one thing I said to Rico about it, um, when everybody got their houses and stuff and we still, we were still working, I said, man, what's missing is us being in that house. Mm. You know, once you get money and everything, you know, you start families and stuff, things change, man. It's a whole new outlook on what we were doing before. Yeah. But uh, I told Rick, I said, man, that it didn't mess anything up, but I said, man, we really need that old house vibe back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was nothing like it to go over there, bro, and there's everybody sitting on the steps and everybody right. Yeah. That was it. It was like a school, man. Mm -hmm. Like a dirty, smoked out school. <laughs> Talk to me about when the money came in and all of that time leading up to it, working for the money. When you finally see the money, what did that do to your mind and how did that change everything? Well, man, it drove me crazy. <laughs> oh, I went and started going to strip club. That, that would fuck me up. <laughs> you know, um, being in Atlanta, getting money and getting a big house. Man, I had, man, I had got a Holyfield first house Woo. and his first uh, wife had Paulette. I bought that house, it was four stories. My God. I had bought a Benz with AMG, kid on it, and red, candy apple, peanut butter. Like Pimp said, why? With that top back, last freak nigga, 94, I think. Man, I was acting a fool. That money was, man, it, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun, it was fun. You know what I'm saying? But money will do that, you know? Cause at first, you know, we all in the house, and call a girl up to give us some money, get a piece of, yeah. get her to buy all of us hamburgers or something. And then they go from that to meeting LaFace, to meeting L.A. Reed and Pebbles, and they taking us to these nice restaurants. And you know what I'm saying? I'm in the ordering, everybody ordering steaks and stuff, and I'm ordering a hamburger. I don't know no better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> I'm still me, so I'm in the, yeah, let me get a cheeseburger. And they like, <laughs> Nigga. You don't want nothing else? I'm like, I don't know what this, this shit is. <laughs> Better cheat. I ain't never had that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So money came along, man. It it it, it helped us grow and, and grow up and figure stuff out and 
pay bills and everything, but boy, it came with something else to it. You know, it came with that power. It came with everybody wanting a piece of you and what you want. You know what I mean? So money is money. But dealing with that power and everybody wanted a piece of sleepy though, because see, that's the other side of it too. You know, yeah. we understand the spending part, but what about the responsibility of trying to maintain friendships and relationships with all of this new damn money? Yeah, friendships go fast, bro, because, you know, and I'm going to say this. If I got it, my friend got it, definitely. But that don't mean take advantage of it, my dude. I mean, damn, like, of course, I got you. I promise you, you will never starve. You will never be homeless, my bro. But I am not your father. <laughs> Point blank, period. <laughs> if you feel like I'm your daddy, you out your mind, <laughs> big nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Go <laughs> do what you gotta do. That's always been my thing. I have no problem with helping anybody. Now we will to the end of time, but boy, I do not take advantage of that. Know, know your limits and know what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't ever come at somebody. I know that you might have grew up with a person, and I get it. But don't come at them like they owe you that. They don't owe you shit. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? They just got lucky. You know what I'm saying? Old. Now, if you're a friend, support your friend, no matter what. Your friend gonna have your back. But that don't mean, goddamn, if we go to strip club, you expect me to give you $2,000, bro. I'm like, bro, I just spent 4000 on both of us. What you talking about? <laughs> Come on. Why you think you got all 15, 20,000 of them goddamn dances? <laughs> you ain't paid for nothing. And now you want two Gs? Boy, get, go, boy go on. Go Come on. Go on with that, bye. <laughs> Go on with that. I'm that. old school though, but I mean these days, I'm gonna say some these young G's spend money, boy. Yeah. They spend money and I get it. If you got hundreds of millions like that, and you want your crew to have I mean, you know, have ten thousand dollars a piece, that's fine. I've done that too. Yeah. But I can't do that all the time. And I'm not gonna do that all the time. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Cause I have to make sure I'm straight. If I'm straight, then we all straight. If it's I take care of everybody and I ain't straight. Come on. Where we gonna get money at? Ain't nobody coming to the poor house to see you. Yeah. Ain't no <laughs> Shit. Ain't nobody coming to see me and bring me no sandwich. <laughs> they wanna see me. They wanna meet me at the, at the goddamn, at the at Magic City eating a Wayne so they can get some Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking shit, man. I'm uh, with you. 